Hi, so my name's Keenan, as some of you guys may already know. Uh, I've had a few requests to try and put up a tutorial, tutorial for my conch braid, which I... It's based off an old tutorial, which I found online, but I can't find it anywhere, so I'm gonna have to make a new one myself. And uh, it does tend to work best with wet hair, which I actually don't currently have, but I don't really want to shower right now, so... I'm just gonna make do with dry hair. You can do it with dry hair. Um, it's really good if you already know how to French braid your hair. Um, you can do it with you can do it in a Dutch braid variation as well, but it's a little bit more complicated. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to stick with the French braid variation for now. So basically, what you need are um, I use these. I'm not sure if you can see them, but I use these tiny little plastic hair elastics. You'll need two of them. Um, you can use regular bobby pins to keep the actual button part in, but I tend not to use them because they don't stay in very well and I have really long hair and my hair weighs a lot. So uh, what I use instead are what I call, um, I just call them spiral bobby pins and I'm not exactly sure what company these are from, but I just bought them at my grocery store. You can probably get them at your local drugstore. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive than regular bobby pins, but they're, they're, they're really, really great and I promise they're worth it. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is brush your hair all the way back, and sorry, I know this lighting isn't the best, but it's the only thing I could do so you could actually see my hair. And uh, first thing you're going to do is behind, I guess in my case it's my right ear, you're going to take a small section and just separate it from the rest of it. And it doesn't really matter how big or small it is, I'm not sure if you can see how big that is. And I just want you to start from right above your ear and French braid that back. And again, you can do this as a Dutch braid if you'd like. Um, this is going to be a little bit on the messy side since I, my hair is dry. But it doesn't have to be. It really doesn't have to be very big. And once you have finish just make sure all your hair is on the other side and just braid off the end of it sorry my hair is sometimes it's easier if you clip it out of the way but I was smart enough to grab one beforehand and spray it all the way down Once you're at the very bottom, just tie it off. So as you can probably see now, there's a small piece of hair that's a small chunk of hair that's been braided away on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, the majority of my hair is actually loose. And what you're going to be doing now is first you want to brush your hair back, but try to make sure you keep it on the left hand side so it doesn't actually cross over across this piece here. So what you're going to be doing is you start near the center, but like a little bit off to the right. You want to start French braiding your hair. But what you're going to be doing a little bit differently than a regular French braid. Sorry, my hair is very long so it gets caught on the ends. But uh, you're only actually going to be adding hair. For, well, I'm actually going to do one or two, but after the first couple passes you only want to actually add hair from the one side so I'm only going to be adding hair from the left hand side and just keep continuing doing that This will be way easier if you have wet hair. I try and do this a couple times because my hair is so being a little bit unruly. But double check that there's no pieces that have crossed over. And then braid off the end piece.
and this I find this typically is a very uneven braid just on the very end just because your hair is usually not cut in a way that makes this very even your layers aren't usually but sometimes it works out and I think this one might this one might work so now you have two braids. You have a small one on the right-hand side, and you have a big one on the left that ends on the left-hand side. And I know I have a little piece that crosses over, but for the most part, this kind of comes down to the left, and it is a much bigger braid. So what you're going to be doing now, and this is where the these little things come in handy, is you're going to take the small braid on the right-hand side and twist it kind of around the base until you have it in a tight little bun. And I find I usually only need to use one of these things. And stick it in and then twirl it. And now it's anchored. And basically what this this braid acts as kind of the center of the actual conch braid and it's a little bit of an optical illusion because it looks a little bit a little bit more complicated than it actually is. And the next thing you're gonna do is take the left hand braid, pass it underneath the other braid, and if you can, a little bit of an issue, but usually you can tuck the end in and sometimes it takes a little bit of an adjustment or sometimes an extra bobby pin or two and you take the other spiral pins and try and anchor it from different points so that it'll actually stay Sometimes I do get this bit of braid sticking out, but I can usually just get it to hide in there. And that should be it. And I don't find it usually moves around very much, especially if I've done a really good job of anchoring it. And it usually I find I can do it a lot tighter if I have wet hair. So there you go. Hope it works for you. If you have any questions, just shoot me a message and I will do my best to explain. Cheers. I actually forgot to give you more than a very brief glimpse of this. I really